Yo. Today we are making this. A fully vector illustration using Adobe Fresco. This would be a great video to follow along with if you're looking to make any sort of t-shirt or merch design that you want to keep limited colors and fully vector. Or something a little similar to this one. Available at lowintheflow.com. This is the process that I've used for years to design hundreds of different t-shirts and merch graphics for fun and also for clients all over the world. Maybe grab some of your drawing supplies, get caffeinated and situated, and enjoy the video. All right, so in the most recent Adobe Fresco update, they made a few changes and added some new features. A major one is that they changed the brush library. So now instead of having three different options at the top, you just click that top button and it opens a larger panel where you can access all the different brush categories. This might take some getting used to, but it's nice that it's bigger now and you can kind of see all of your brush options better. Now, if you've seen my other videos, you know I love a dang pencil brush. The pencil brush found in the sketching category feels just like a pencil to me and it's what I love to use to map out my concept. Okay, so for this video, I wanted to showcase my process for creating a design that's a bit more simple. I wanna keep it fully vector and use a bit less colors. This is gonna be a great example for how to design something that may end up on a t-shirt or a tote bag or any other kind of merch product. This type of design is usually what I'm getting hired for the most, so I thought it'd be useful to walk you through that process for how I design most of my client projects. All right, gonna put this sketch in sport mode and I will see you in a few seconds to get started on our vector line art. Now that my sketch is complete, I'm going to turn down the opacity on my sketch layer and then add a new layer so I can start drawing on top of it. Now I am reaching for my favorite line art brush and basically the only brush I ever use. If you want to recreate this brush for yourself, you can go ahead and screenshot my brush settings here. Just start with a basic round brush and then customize it. So I keep 100% roundness. I don't change the angle at all. The angle doesn't matter if your brush is set to 100% roundness. So it's at 90, I'm just gonna leave it there. Taper is in length mode, and then I do a 65% taper at the beginning and the end of my stroke. No tilt and everything else unchecked. I also turn my smoothing all the way up. This helps makes your lines extra smooth. If you don't like the subtle lag in your stroke, you can just turn the smoothing down to like 80% and it'll still be pretty smooth, but it'll be more responsive. This personally doesn't bother me. I like that it slows my stroke down a little bit, but for some of you, you may not like that. I frequently use the lasso found in the selection tools to select an area and then move it around using the transform tool, like you see here. Okay, so another tool that you will see me using all the time throughout my process is vector trimming. When you're using a vector brush, you can double tap the touch shortcut, which is that little circle floating around your screen. Tap it until the outside ring is blue, and then you're in trimming mode and you can just trim intersecting lines. Just go ahead and slice through the section that you want gone to trim it away. And if you want to create a perfect shape like a circle or an oval, just hold at the end of your stroke. And uh, there you go. Perfect for all eyeballs of all shapes and sizes. And if you've been digging my videos, please subscribe, like, comment, all the things to help you grow out. I've been really enjoying the process of creating these and building an entirely new community here on YouTube. I've had a bit of an audience on Instagram for a number of years now, but what I've found starting this channel is that the majority of all my subscribers are brand new people who found me on YouTube, which I think is so cool. I feel like I'm tapping into a new demographic and it's really inspired me. I think you can get to know one another and offer so much more value in long format videos. Everything on Instagram has just been feeling so rushed and overwhelming and YouTube has been a fresh breath of air for me. I feel pretty driven to like build something great here. And editing videos has also become a new creative outlet for me that I've been loving and I'm getting better and faster at it too. Anyway, I appreciate all the love and support and I'm gonna shut up for a little bit so we can vibe out and draw together and I'll be back in a few minutes as we start to work on adding some colors in.
Okay, we are done with our line art and I think this is looking super sick. I'm gonna set my line art layer as a reference so we can start adding in colors on different layers. When you go to add color to an empty layer, it's gonna ask you how you want to fill. Make sure you select vector if you wanna keep your whole design in vector format. Now, there are a few reasons I like to separate my colors onto different layers. Number one, if you're working on a t-shirt design or something that's gonna be screen printed, the printing company is going to need all the colors separated by layer since they print each color separately. So for client projects, I always separate every color and I label the layers of the end with their hex color code too, just in case they decide that they wanna screen print. Okay, real quick, another tip, if you're filling in colors and accidentally select outside the space you were wanting to fill, you may have filled your entire drawing. You can check by turning your line art layer off. And as you can see, I accidentally filled in everything pink. So I'm just gonna use the vector trimming tool to slice through an area and make it all disappear. This is helpful to know if you catch this too late and you're too many steps ahead to just hit undo. Another reason to separate out your colors is it makes it a hell of a lot easier to make color changes later, especially if you're exporting to Adobe Illustrator and then you can just select everything in one layer and change everything of that same color all at once. Okay, so I am realizing that my intention was for this part of the snake to be in front of the skull, so I'm going to fix that real quick by just drawing over it and then using the, uh, you guessed it, the vector trimming tool, and then just adding some details and some color back in and voila, easy fix. And I decided that these leaves were looking a little boring and I wanted to bring in a little bit more details and line art, so I'm using a slightly smaller brush size just going in and adding some more lines to make them look a little bit more detailed. And now I'm getting started on some highlights and some accent colors, which leads me into my next reason why separating colors is so important. It makes it so much easier to add in highlights and shadows if everything is layered correctly. I think it's just a really great practice to have for all of your illustration work. Even if you don't have an intention for a drawing that you're doing, I just always have the same process and try to keep all my layers organized because maybe this will end up on a t-shirt or maybe a company will license it from me. It is such a bummer when a company or a brand reaches out and they're like, we wanna license 10 of your drawings. And you're like, sick, that's awesome. And then you go into the files and all the layers are totally misorganized and the colors are all over the place and you have to spend hours reorganizing them before delivering the files to the client. Um, yeah, I've learned that the hard way. So now I just try to stay organized from the get-go, no matter what the intention of my drawing is. I suppose that's another tip in and of itself, is to show up and be organized as an artist and get your layers together because brands appreciate it so, so much. All right, here is my completed illustration. I'm gonna export it and pop it into Adobe Illustrator for some final touches. All you need to do is go to Publish and Export. To export as, you can name your document. And then I'm gonna export it as a PSD. You can also do a PDF. Both will keep all of your layers intact and keep them vector for when you export to Illustrator. And then I just like to airdrop to my computer. Once you open the file in Illustrator, make sure to select Convert Layers to Objects, which will keep all of your layers separated. The first thing I like to do is organize and label all of my layers. So I'm selecting everything in the layer, going to Properties, fill, and then copying this color code found here and renaming each layer with its corresponding color code. While most of my layers are organized and separated, there's always some random things on the wrong layer or I accidentally used two different shades of a color that were supposed to be the same. So I'm just going through moving things around to make sure each color is separated onto its own layer and adjusting any color mistakes that I made. Next, I like to add in some text and some fun design elements. And you'll notice that I often draw these skulls that are cracked open with things growing out of them. Sometimes it's plants, a wave, animals, the list goes on. I just think it looks super cool, but there is in fact a deeper meaning. Throughout a lot of my work, I play with the concept of get out of your head. I've used that quote in my work many times, and even without the specific words, you'll see that that theme is communicated in a lot of my drawings. I just think that we all live in our heads too much, me included. I personally am someone who can get really in my head and worry about things that don't matter, and I don't think I'm alone in that, so I like to create some friendly reminders for everyone. 
The font that I'm using is Solmar from Nai Now Brand. I hope I'm saying that correctly, which is Adam Nai Now, super awesome designer and illustrator. He's got loads of great fonts that I use all the time. After checking out his site, I realized that there's so many others that I still need, so go check it out. While I'm an illustrator, I like to add in some fun design elements to really just fill in any awkward spaces and tie the text into the illustration better. I never outgrew those silly little birds that we drew as kids. Um, those appear in my designs a lot, even though I'm 27 and a professional artist. Those are the greatest things you can use to fill space. Just draw some freaking birds and put them in the sky and bada bang, bada boom. Bada bang, bada boom. Then I'm just going in and fixing any little mistakes that I can find. The benefit of blowing your design up large on your monitor and looking at it up close is that you can kind of find those mistakes easier than you could on your iPad. And now I'm just adding in my artist name, low and the flow, into the design. I like to find a place within the design where I can add the text that feels natural. I like to keep it small and discreet, but not so small that you can't see it. Now I get people who take my designs and just erase my name and steal them. Super not cool. So I've also been adding in a couple small lows throughout the design in places that people wouldn't expect, just to make it a little more douchebag proof. All right, here is the final design. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.